Stark State College Massage Therapy Lab Notes with Michael Vigila, Licensed Acupuncturist and Licensed Massage Therapist. When you are uh, going to do a longer back routine, or actually this is what I tend to do in my normal massage routine, in other words, you're not going to start with lubricant. And I'm going to show mainly something called skin rolling, but you never want to just start with skin rolling. You always want to warm up the tissue first. So if you see that you're going to be spending more time on the back or for whatever reason you just prefer to not start with lubricant, do start still with kneading. So this is no different than the kneading that you do in your regular massage routine, but you have applied lubricant first when you get to this part in your general massage. So just palmer kneading, compressing without sliding, and releasing the erector spinae. And you're treating the opposite side from which you are standing. But the purpose of this is when you do skin rolling, some people really like skin rolling, and some people do not tolerate it well at all. So if you warm it up, that's one of the first things. Then you can also do some digital kneading. So remember, the only thing you really need lubricant for is friction. You can do a lot of techniques without lubricant. And then this next thing that I'll demonstrate is new information. It's a cross-handed fascial stretch. So one hand is on one side of the spine, the other hand on the other side, and you're going to press down and stretch in opposite directions. So you're going this way. But you don't do it fast. Just think of it like you're stretching the skin on the back, stretching the fascia. Move to the next position. So the hands are moving in opposite directions and there is some downward force. And I'll usually start that on the low back, do three hand positions up to the top, switch direction of the hands and move back down. So again, you're moving the hands in opposite directions while you're pushing down stretching the skin. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Have you had skin rolling done before? No. So this is a good example of how, because many people don't know what it is or maybe have not had it done before. And I'm going to show it to you in two forms. The simple form of skin rolling is what in Chinese medicine is more commonly just called pinch and roll. So you're lifting the skin, you're compressing it, and then you're rolling back and forth. And then you move to the next segment, compress or pinch the skin, and roll back and forth. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So most people can tolerate this version of skin rolling. And what this is doing is loosening the superficial fascia between the skin and the muscle. And think in terms of how many blood vessels and nerves pass through that superficial fascia. So if that's dehydrated and clamped down, that alone is going to cause some discomfort for people or some tightness or some stiffness. I'm only doing one side of the spine at a time. Now, you will occasionally find people that it is virtually impossible to lift their skin. So you don't do this because you can't. And, and so just know that if you have a person whose skin is so tight that it can't be lifted, uh, just don't, don't even try to do this. Perhaps after several weeks of massage, their skin will start to become more supple. Now also it will tend to feel thicker 
down lower. There is a fascial plane down here called the thoracolumbar fascia, and so that will feel thicker. So that's one side. Now I'm moving over to the other side. Same thing, just compress, pinch, and roll. And you can adjust the pressure on this. If somebody says, that's a little uncomfortable, you can do it lighter. You don't have to pull up as much skin. You don't have to squeeze as hard. It's still useful to do. Has the pressure been OK so far? Mm -hmm. Now, notice as I'm looking down her spine here, notice the area I have not done versus the area I have done. So you see considerably more blood, more hyperemia on the side that has already been treated. And isn't that one of our goals in massage, is to improve circulation, to bring more blood to the tissue? Was it sensitive as I got down to the lower back at all? Yeah. Okay, so the reason I ask that is starting about here, but definitely the next one, it started to feel thick and congested. So right about there, I don't know if you can tell that it, it was a little harder for it to just come up into my fingers as I compressed. So you can treat at this level like a trigger point. So I'm just going to ask you, please just tell me when to stop with pressure. I'm going to slowly and gently compress, but you tell me when to stop. Stop. Okay. So you just hold that for 15 or 20 seconds. And as you're holding it, fascia has the ability to absorb more fluid under pressure. And then it feels like it starts to release as it stretches and lets go. Is that changing at all or easing? Right. Okay. So, and then also here. Now, this may just be naturally thicker, but it also, usually it, it feels, if it feels thick, uh, there's usually some need for treatment there. So, say when here, Jessica. Stop. And you just hold that. So, notice I did several different forms of kneading, some stretching with the cross-handed fascial stretch before I did this. So usually when people have had this done and they say, oh yeah, I've had that done, it was really painful. I've had therapists do this on me without any warm-up whatsoever. <laughs> so that is, that's a way that's fairly easy to do, it's very effective, and you can adjust the pressure easily doing it that way. So I'm going to suggest you start with that. But then there's another form of skin rolling that's more continuous. And it looks like this, where you're going to start with the compression, and then it's like you're going to walk with one hand at a time. So as one hand moves that pinches and rolls, then the next hand pinches and rolls, then the next hand pinches and rolls, then the next hand pinches and rolls. Now, how does that feel? Is that uncomfortable? No. Okay. Now, I'm not using as much pressure as I could. But it's already been warmed up. Now, if I wanted to prove to her that I could make her feel uncomfortable, because for some reason some therapists have this mentality that if I hurt my patients, they'll think I'm a good therapist. So if I wanted to make her think, boy, I really know how to hurt people, I would do it this way. I would not warm up the skin in any way, shape, or form. I would start with this, and I would do it very rapidly. <laughs> And that didn't feel good, did it? No. Even after being warmed up. Now, the reason I bring this to your attention is I've had many therapists do it that way on me. In other words, no warm-up, fast skin rolling. Do not do that <laughs> under any circumstances. And I make a huge point of it because I've seen it <coughs> a lot. So the appropriate way to do skin rolling is warm the skin up first, 
do it slowly because that gives the tissue time to adapt to the pressure. And this is very hard to teach, this continuous rolling thing. I don't know why, for whatever reason, there's not really much to say about it, but I have seen students struggle with trying to copy it. So, hence one of the reasons I want it on video. Okay. So if you do all of that before you add lubricant, that will take five minutes just that much.